Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Ripley Presbyterian Church. This day of worship, rest, and renewal in our Lord. Before we begin our worship time, let's share in some announcements and any joys or prayer concerns that you would like to lift up with one another and for one another. In our announcements this week, we will have our congregational meeting on May 23rd for the purpose of electing the elders to your session for the class of 2023. We have three nominees from your nominating committee, Jennifer Huddleston, Benton Elliott, and Robert Goolsby. So we ask you to be prayerful for that process and uh, the voting that will take place in our congregational meeting on May 23rd. Uh, other announcements today, we celebrate with Lorenzo Medford. He had a birthday this week, Friday, and uh, happy birthday. Glad to see you're in worship with us today, Lorenzo, and all of you who are joining us for the first time in a long time in the sanctuary and also joining us virtually this morning. We are grateful to share in worship with you. We'll also be celebrating communion on May 23rd, so make sure to uh, procure your elements if you'd like to share in communion at uh, your place of worship, wherever that be, at home or with friends and family, or certainly if you're here in the sanctuary, we invite you to uh, share in that holy feast of the Lord's Supper on May 23rd. Our mission focus for uh, last month, we uh, surpassed our goal of fundraising and reached $1,050 for serving uh, our congregation as an outreach to our community. Thank you for your generosity. Our mission focus this month, for the month of May, is the Tippa County Good Samaritan Center, where we provide food and care for those who are most vulnerable in our community. So we look forward to sharing in that. We also had the One Great Hour of Sharing special offering that raised $320 last week. So that's an update on our mission outreaches. And uh, you'll see the uh, giving totals that we have for our budget, the needs for operations and ministry of our church. Thank you for continuing to be a part of the ministry that we provide to our community and the world around us. Are there other announcements that we need to lift up verbally today before we share in our prayer concerns and joys? Senior recognition, Senior recognition Sunday is going to be May 16th, and Mr. Luke Hill will be graduating from Corinth High School this year. So we will be recognizing him during our worship service on May 16th. Looking forward to that. Hope y'all can... Help us celebrate and lift up Luke in prayer as he begins this new journey in his life as he starts his college education. Okay, any other announcements? All right, let's share in our prayer concerns today. Lift up one another with one another joys and concerns that we have. Uh, we do want to pray for my aunt, Lane Hill Young, uh, she is uh, uh, having some chronic issues with her health. We continue to lift her up. want to pray for her. Frank Gay, they uh, have decided not to have a surgery at this time. going to treat him uh, in another way. But we lift up Frank and Becky. Love you guys. Continuing to pray for you and your health journey and your needs. Uh, we pray for our dear Aunt Elliot. Uh, as well, and uh, Ann had a follow-up treatment with her physician. We're continuing to pray for you, Ann, and offer you our love. Uh, we Are there other additions this morning or updates to our prayer list? I do want to share, uh, Jennifer's going to post in our chat there on our live feed, for those of you who are watching virtually or those that go, go back and watch, Mary John Deal has transition into the Pontotoc Rehabilitation Center. Found out she had another broken bone in her foot, so she has had a doggone time and is really completely immobile right now. So she's in that rehab facility for some time, trying to build up her strength. 
the address is going to be posted in our live chat. She does have her mobile phone number, uh, so she is taking calls and receiving correspondence. I spoke with her this past week, but let's continue to remember Mary John, certainly Margaret, and their family during this transitional time. Are there others this morning? Okay, if none, dear friends, once again, this is the day of the Lord. Let us worship our God now in joy and in gladness. Amen. Let's receive together these words that call us to worship from Psalm 22. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will pay before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. Friends, let's respond together to that call to worship our God by sharing in unison a prayer of confession. Would you pray with me? Gracious God, our sins are too heavy to carry, too real to hide, and too deep to undo. Forgive what our lips tremble to name, what our hearts can no longer bear. And what has become for us a consuming fire of judgment? Set us free from a past that we cannot change. Open to us a future in which we can be changed. And grant us grace to grow more and more in your likeness and image. Through Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Amen.
hear these words of life and deliverance from our sins. Believe the good news. God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Thanks be to God. This morning's first reading comes from the book of Acts, chapter 8, beginning at verse 26. Then an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Kandasi, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, Go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, Do you understand what you're reading? He replied, How can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of scripture that he was reading was this, like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb, silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, About whom, may I ask you, does the prophet say this? About himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak. And starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more, and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. This is the word of the Lord. Be Let's pray together once more. Oh God, we bow in your presence understanding that we are in the need of prayer. We are in the need of your comfort, your guidance, your correction, your counsel, even as we seek your words. We don't even know how to hear them in the way, to apply them to our life, to make sense of their meaning even. We need you, O oh Holy Spirit. We stand in the need of prayer. So God, even as we seek you this day to give our worship and proclaim your goodness and count our blessings, we are all so hungry. We're eager to be molded, to be made more like you, for we believe in you there is love, and in love there is life more abundant. Our lives are more joy-filled, the more of you there is in our existence. So will you now, O oh God, let the words of this mouth, as we hear these scriptures, the meditations of all of our hearts, be done in ways that are pleasing and acceptable unto you. For you, Lord, are our rock, our firm foundation, and our redeemer. We seek and ask. In the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> our second lesson of scripture today is from 1 John in chapter 4. I'll begin with verse 7, continue down through verse 21. Listen with me for the word of the Lord. Beloved, let us love one another. Because love is from God. 
Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, that, but that he loved us and he sent his son to be an atoning sacrifice of our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God. And they abide in God. So we have known and believed that the love that God has for us, God is love. And those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. John the evangelist begins our reading today with these words that are not often used in our language. Now, a portion of it is the word love, right? John repetitively says throughout this passage, we should love because we are love. And God is love, and because God is love, if we put our hope in God, then God is in us, and God's love is in us. John begins this writing by making a proclamation. In fact, a unison proclamation may be similar to our prayer that we share in today when we call it a prayer of confession, a prayer in unison, or perhaps our affirmation of faith that we embraced, embraced together as the Apostles' Creed. It says when we practice those forms of worship that we are of one accord, we're in unison or in communion. So John begins by saying, addressing the believers in this way, beloved. The noun, as Manya and I were going back and forth this morning, Pat, and the word we're right over, is beloved an adverb? Is it an adjective? Is it a noun? The answer is yes. It can be all. As John addresses his readers, and let's take it a step further and say as he addresses us this day, he recognizes us as beloved. So the next question for me, the curious mind is, what does it mean to be the beloved? So I went to my trusty dictionary and, and looked it up. To be the beloved is much more than simply being loved. It's a deep, passionate, fearless love for the other. A love that cherishes the one we bestow that emotion upon, Norris. It 
It's an irresistible desire to be in the presence and offer our affection for the one we loved. That's what it means to be beloved. And those are the words. The words that John says that God feels for us when we are looked upon as his children. Wow, can we say amen and go home? What more is there to our faith, any in our call to worship, than to know that we are cherished by Almighty God? Because I don't know about y'all, but sometimes I'm not so cherishable. Sometimes I'm less than lovable. No amens over here from the Hill family. Sometimes I'm less than irresistible. Aren't we all? And even then, or perhaps more so then, God claims us as beloved. What does it mean to be beloved then if we have a better understanding of what beloved is. The scripture says this. This is the depths of God's love for us. I've kept my iPhone up here this morning where I can read these texts specifically. I want to get John's words exact. As he says in verse 9 and 10, here is what it means to be beloved. God's love was revealed to us in this way. God sent his son his only son into the world so that we might live through him. Friends, that's what it means to be beloved. That God would sacrifice his own son so that we may have life through him in life more abundantly. We are worthy of being saved, our Lord says. And in verse 10, he continues by saying, in this love that God has for us, not only that God loved, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. He wants to clarify, make sure there's no miscommunication that your sins are conquered forever through the love and grace and life-giving sacrifice of Jesus Christ, God's son. So in spite of me being less than cherishable at times, less than perfect, less than worthy of love, God came to that portion of my life, my brokenness, my anger, my lying, my cheating, my stealing, my selfishness, came to me in my most vulnerable state offered his vulnerability as a savior that I could be restored through his love. I am beloved. And so are you. You see, that's the heart of the gospel message. I read an article just recently where Kathy Ireland, a world famous supermodel, was interviewed and she shared about her life of faith. How she began her career as a young model living in a flat in Paris all alone, fearful, trying to make it in the industry. She said in some ways uh, being photographed in a model, it seems like a luxurious lifestyle, but it was terrifying. And she said one night I was in my flat and in the bottom of my suitcase after a visit my mom had packed a Bible she said I opened it and I didn't even know how to read it she said my eyes came to the gospel of Matthew she said I started reading about Jesus and his love 
And she said, what made it real for me in a way the faith Tommy never had been before was that I saw Jesus so powerful, so loving, and so affirming of me as a woman. You see, what was the light bulb moment for her was because she said many men in our industry were a bit sketchy, to say it nicely. They were out for their own motives, to take advantage of young girls like her. But she saw in Jesus one who loved her and cherished her. And she said, in that understanding, I saw love and I wanted him as the Lord of my life. You see, friends, that's what love does. When we understand, Fred, the depths of God's love for us, it changes us forever. We want Jesus, in the words of Kathy Ireland, to truly be Lord of our life. Yes, because the gift of salvation that John spoke of today. As John says, because when we have Christ in our life, we are delivered from death forever. From fear, it's conquered, Randall. Not only is the promise eternal, Vince, the promise is for now. Friends, this isn't preacher talk. It's a sojourner along the way like you, and as we heard Jennifer read about today, that Ethiopian eunuch that was seeking for a better life, who'd gone to worship to count his blessings, and found in his baptism with Philip a joy that he'd never known in all of his wealth, in all of his prestige and power as the Kandaki of the country of Ethiopia. He found in Christ a fullness and a love that he'd never known. You see, that's the part I say to you. It's not preacher talk. I'm the sojourner with the Ethiopian, as are you, in the promise in saying, friends, when we trust Jesus as the Lord of our life, when we trust Jesus and his love for our marriage, in our businesses, for our careers, with our professions, there's a joy and there's a fullness that nothing in the world can give. That's been my experience. It's been years. I've trusted so many things, so many uh, temptations, so many wanderings that left me ultimately empty. Because, friends, there's a hole in our life that nothing can fill but Almighty God and the love of Jesus Christ. If you know that love, you, you know what I'm talking about. If you've never began that journey, we can do that today. If you want to renew your passion for Christ so that his love will give you a joy that you don't know, you can renew that journey even in this moment. For our Lord is eager and yearning to proclaim his love to us all. So this is what it means to be beloved. And this is... A picture of the God that we serve. So, so now the question I transition to, and I want to read these scriptures again, is now that we understand more what it means to be beloved, how do we respond to being beloved? Here's what the scripture says. John explains it quite well. Our response is this. Those who say I love God and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandments we have from them is this. It's pretty simple. John says right here. Here's the commandment. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. Wow, John's gone to meddling. I was all right when I knew I was loved, Lorenzo. I was all right 
when I knew that I needed to love God back in worship, but now John's telling me, I got to love all these other knuckleheads. It's hard enough that I'm the knucklehead, Lynn, and know that God loves me, but I have to love the knucklehead in the other. Is that what he said? I have to love everybody, Judy, even at their worst? Has God loved me at my worst? There's a game in racquetball called Cutthroat. And you play that game when there's three of you instead of two of you or four. And in Cutthroat, the objective is simple. It's one against two. And the server is trying to make his or her point against the other two that are trying to help him lose their point. And in that game of Cutthroat, like many sports... You seek out your opponent's weaknesses and you try to capitalize on them so that they will be defeated and you will be victorious. They don't call it cutthroat for nothing, do they? That sounds mean. And in many ways, our pursuits for victory in this life can be a lot like a game of cutthroat. Whether it's our passion for our position, whether it be social, political, in the business world, our own objectives and desires, sometimes we have a desire to win at all costs, capitalize on our opponent's weaknesses. But John says this about our faith. He says, we are beloved. And as beloved, we are to proclaim the hope of Jesus Christ to all creation. We are the church. We're different. We are the message of the good news of the gospel. And we proclaim it, how, Pat? By simply Loving the other as we've been loved. Friends, I believe the hope for our nation, the hope for our world is the love of Jesus Christ and he's entrusted it to us for all around. John says, Love as you've been loved. And if you don't love, gosh, John is really pressing it here. He said, I'm not sure that God's abiding you in you in the first place. You're lying about your faith. Because you're, if you are loved, you can't help but love the other. Have you ever thought about that? You can't be loved, I'm convinced. And not want to give it away. Want to love somebody else. I read an article recently about a dog named Fido. Y'all ever heard of a dog called Fido? I always thought that was just a, it's kind of a generic name for any dog, right? But look it up. Wikipedia, great resource. Don't know if it's always accurate, but it's got some good stuff in it. Kind of like my sermons. Fido was an actual dog. Sure was. A dog in Italy. One day this man found Fido, and he was strangely and mangy and looked terrible, and he, he followed him home. He decided, well, we're going to feed him. He and his wife did, and they took care of Fido. Every day the man would walk to the park, catch a train, go to work. Fido would follow him. Sit there all day and wait for his master to come home and he'd walk back with him. This went on for two years, Fido displaying his loyalty, his affection, his love. Tragically, his master died unexpectedly. Fido lived for another ten years. 
every day, 5,000 days for the next 10 years, he would walk to that park, wait all day, searching for his master to return. Sometimes I wish I could love like Fido and understand that when the master changes my existence, there's a loyalty, there's a faithfulness, there's a desire to live out my love for all to see. Friends, here's the end of the story. We are called to love. As John said, because God first loved us. But here's the trade-off. When we do love, we like Fido the dog, guess what? We get the benefit of dwelling in relationship with a master who will nurture us, love us, and sustain us forever. Thanks be to God that we are beloved. Friends, if you believe that Jesus Christ is the hope of the world and his love is real for us, would you join with me and remember as his people what it is that we believe? Let us affirm our faith together by saying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we prepare to share in our prayers of the people, I also want to mention the family of Ann Muskelly. Are there any other prayer concerns before we pray? Let's lift up our prayers with one another and for one another. Oh God, we thank you. We thank you for this day of worship. In the busyness of our lives and of our world to pause and consider your goodness, your grace, our blessings to be your beloved. God, we celebrate you. We want your joy, your light to shine in us so all who look upon us may see a glimpse of your love. We pray, O oh Lord, for your church. We don't even know what your church is going to look like post-COVID in the worship communities, but we know your church will continue to thrive. Will you enhance, inspire, empower ministries wherever your gospel is practiced and proclaimed? We do pray for this congregation. We pray that we continue to minister to this community by living outside of ourselves, by serving our neighbors in what we say and do. Pray, O oh God, for our nation. We believe we live in the greatest land in the world. We are blessed to be Americans. Help us, O oh God, to focus more on everything that we are blessed and benefit more than anything that divides us. Help us in our resources, in our freedom, in our liberty to offer and proclaim your love 
in what we do and say. We, we ask you to guide our leaders, to be with our president, the Congress, the Senate, the Supreme Court. We pray for our military. We're grateful for those who serve to protect our freedom. We lift up our state, our county, our city governing bodies. We pray for the employers in our community, the rich, the powerful, those who have authority over so many. We pray for the weak, the vulnerable, the overlooked, the abused. We pray, God, for every person on our prayer list and every person on the prayer list of our hearts, the names that are spoken and go unspoken. We ask now for miracles of grace, for healing where there is sickness, for restoration where there's brokenness, for life where there's death, for comfort where there's sorrow. Will you hear our prayers for one another and with one another? We pray for ourselves, for each one that is bowing in the words of this prayer right now, when the wants, O oh God, can be in accordance with your holy need, we open the floodgates of heaven, pour forth bounteous blessings. Whether the needs be physical, spiritual, mental, emotional, relational, or professional, you are the physician. Will you bring healing? God, we pray for those not only that we're closest to, yes, our friends and family, yes, our church, those that we work with, those we have deep affection for, those who are beloved especially to us, but we pray also for those from whom we're estranged, the neighbor, the world around us, your children. Now, God, as those blessed to be called yours, we join our voices as one and say in prayer the words you taught us by praying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, as we go forth as the light and love of Christ, would you, along with me, receive God's blessing for us as his beloved? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God who is our Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now, this day, and forever. Amen.